Like it or not, tipping and gratuities are part of a cruise experience and even part of cruising culture. However, it's not uncommon for people to make some really big mistakes when it comes to knowing who to tip and when to tip on a cruise. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, when I went on my first cruise, I have to admit, when I booked it, I really didn't know how the tipping worked, how the daily gratuities worked, who to tip, who not to tip. And of course, after many years, there's some things that I know and even some things that I take for granted. However, I see questions about tipping and gratuities on a cruise all the time, and I know that doing or not doing some of these things are big mistakes. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you 13 tipping mistakes not to make on a cruise, as well as some tips that you'll want to know. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention two things. Firstly, this topic is often controversial because we all have, after all, different wallets, different cultures. So be mindful of that if you do leave a comment, although I do really like to hear from you. And secondly, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. So the first mistake that unfortunately many first time cruisers make is not realizing when they book a cruise and maybe even that they pay for a cruise that they do need to budget for daily automatic gratuities. Now, every day on most mainstream cruise lines, there will be a charge for automatic daily gratuities. Now, some cruise lines are going to call this a service charge, but basically it usually adds up to about 15 to $20 a person per day in a cabin. Now, if you're two people going on a cruise, that amounts to an additional 210 to $280 for the duration of the cruise. If you are going on a cruise with children, then you have to add that as well. Now, cruising is still a really good value, but it is a mistake to not budget for the cost of those additional daily gratuities. Now, by the way, you might be wondering, are you able to remove the gratuities or simply not pay them? I will talk about that a little bit later on in the video. Number two, another mistake that a lot of people make on a cruise is thinking that once they are done with the daily gratuities, that really they do not have to pay any additional gratuities or service charges on a cruise. And that is just not the case. For certain services on a cruise ship, there are additional gratuities. So a service, for instance, like going to the spa and getting a massage or going to the spa, getting your hair done or getting your nails done, those are all services that add an additional service charge. Something that you'll wanna do is take a look at the invoice when you do book those services. You'll probably notice that you're charged an additional 18 to 20%. Now I mentioned this because it is customary for many of us where we live to maybe give a tip when we do have these services, but to give a tip maybe in cash. So it is something just to be aware of. You already have been charged a service charge, so you do not need to tip an additional amount. Number three, we have to talk about tipping when it comes to drinks and drink packages. Now there's a lot of confusion when it comes to drink packages. So something to know is if you do get a drink package is that you will be charged an additional gratuity on the cost of that drink package. So in other words, the value of the drink package itself and not per drink as you do order every single drink. However, if you don't get a drink package and you're paying instead individually per drink, and this includes specialty coffee, alcoholic drinks, and sodas as well, something that you'll notice is that you are charged an additional service fee or gratuity of about 18 to 20%. Now, in some cases, you're going to get an invoice. It's going to show you that. Other times it's charged automatically to your card and you won't see it, but it is something to be aware of because I know many people make the mistake of double tipping when they do go to the bar on a cruise ship. And of course, if you wanna give the bartender or waiter an extra tip, they will be very happy, but it is not something that you need to do because you are already paying a gratuity or a service charge. Number four, a mistake that a lot of people make is just not bringing enough small bills on a cruise. So this can include $1 bills, $5 bills, $10 bills. Even though a cruise is basically cashless, you do have your onboard account. There are actually times that you're going to want to have cash to tip both on the cruise ship and off the cruise ship when in ports. So who should you tip on a cruise? Well, something that you're going to notice is the very first day of your cruise, so boarding day, the tipping is going to start already even before you get on the cruise ship. Now, what is customary, and I know this is a little bit controversial, there are some people who say you do not need to tip for this, but in my experience, most people really do, and I think it is pretty expected, it is to give a small tip to the porters that take your luggage from your cab or your car when you arrive at the terminal on boarding day. 
Now there's no rule for the amount that you need to give to the porters. Some people say a dollar per bag, other people say $2 per bag. I've heard as much as $5 per bag. So you could do what feels comfortable for you, but it is a good idea to have some small bills rolled up and be ready for boarding day. Now, another time you'll want to be ready to tip is when you order room service. Now, of course, tipping is not mandatory. So in the end, you do what you feel comfortable with. However, keeping in mind that this is really customary, the person that is delivering your room service, they are providing an additional service. Now, in some cases, room service is free. So you might want to tip an additional $1 or $2 to the person who delivers your room service. What I like to do is actually keep a little stack of $1 bills and and even a couple of fives just in one of my drawers in the cabin have that ready just in case however something to be aware of is that room service is not always free on a cruise and there are some cruise lines that are now charging a delivery fee for room service and something that i noticed on a recent cruise is in addition to the delivery fee there was an additional service charge of two dollars or 20 percent that was added as well. Now switching gears a little bit, let's talk about prepaying gratuities. So when you go on a cruise, you have a choice to either pay those automatic daily gratuities, have them charged to your credit card or onboard account when you're on the cruise, or you have another choice, which is prepaying those gratuities before you go. Now there are some people who think that it's a mistake to prepay them. Maybe you will not get as good service on a cruise. However, in my opinion, it is a mistake to think that that is a mistake. So I actually advocate for prepaying the gratuities if you plan on leaving your gratuities there in any case. And I do have a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, if you prepay your gratuities, it just makes it easier to budget for your cruise and not to think about that extra amount coming off during your vacation. Now, another reason is there is a potential for it to be a money saver. Now, in the last few months, we've seen many cruise lines raise their daily gratuities. This means it may have gone from $13 to $15 a day or from $16 even to $20 a day. That really can add up to a big difference if you're a couple or even four people on a cruise. If you prepay your gratuities when you book, even if the cost of the gratuities go up, you've already prepaid your gratuities and you do not owe any more. And the third one is service. Now I have actually tested this out. I have prepaid my gratuities for some cruises and I've left my gratuities to be charged automatically while I'm on a cruise. And honestly, I have noticed no difference at all. Most of the time, I really get very good service, whether it's in the dining room or my cabin attendants. And of course, there are other times where things haven't gone perfectly, but I can say it's had no relation to whether I prepaid my gratuities or not. Now, when it comes to cruise ports, there is some tipping etiquette that you wanna be aware of as well. So firstly, when you go on excursions, it's a bit of a mistake to not bring cash with you. Even if you've booked the cruise line excursion, the reason is that tour guides and drivers on tours, well, it is customary in many destinations to give them a tip at the end of your excursion. Now, again, when it comes to tipping, there's no hard and fast rule when it comes to that amount, but you might want to budget for five to $10 a person, depending on the cost of the excursion. Now, when it comes to the restaurants and bars in cruise ports of call, I do have a couple of words of caution. One of them is tip according to the culture of where you are going. So if you are going to the United States or you're going to Canada, leaving a tip for your server is not only customary, but it's actually built into the way that they are paid in these countries. Now, of course, if you're going somewhere else, for instance, if you're in Australia or even if you're in Europe, then adjust your tipping to what is done in those countries. Now, there is something else to watch for, especially in many big tourist cities. And if we're used to tipping an additional amount, we may not think to check our bill for this but many times in restaurants that are close to the cruise port, you may see that there's already a gratuity or a service charge. Oftentimes it's about 20% these days that is already added. Now I used to see this a lot and I still do see it if we are a group of maybe six people or more, but on a recent cruise, even when we were in St. Martin, I did notice this even though we were two people at the table, there was an additional 20% that was added to my bill. Now this isn't necessarily a problem, but it is something to be aware of. Who not to tip on a cruise? Now this is not something that we talk about very often, but I know a lot of people do have questions about this. And honestly, tipping some of these people will not only be embarrassing possibly for you, but it could even be an insult to them. So basically you do not tip or try to tip any of the officers on the cruise ship. And 
certainly not the captain. Now, speaking of who not to tip, I will be talking about removing gratuities in just a moment, but first I did want to talk about tipping people who do go above and beyond. Now, this is definitely not something that's mandatory. However, I would be lying if I said that it is not something that people do. So sometimes people will tip their cabin attendant a little bit extra, or they might tip a waiter, a maitre d', bartender, you get the idea. But basically, if somebody has really added an extra service or just made your cruise a little bit better, they're definitely going to appreciate that extra tip as a sign of appreciation. Giving a gift instead of a tip. Now, this is definitely a mistake. Don't do this. You could bring a gift if you want to. Sometimes people do ask, what can I bring crew members, especially if they're going on a cruise, maybe during the holiday season. So it's nice if you want to, to bring some chocolates that perhaps the crew can share with their friends. But something to keep in mind is they really don't have a lot of space and they don't really want to collect a lot of gifts. What they do need is cash. So it really is a mistake to take off the gratuities and instead to give a gift even if it is the holidays, if you do want to give an extra gift, maybe consider giving extra cash as a tip instead. Removing gratuities. Now this is definitely the most controversial part of when we do talk about cruise ship gratuities, but yes, on most cruise lines, you can actually remove the gratuities and you can choose to pay cash to different people that you want if you want. Now there are some exceptions. One of them is Norwegian Cruise Line because they charge a service charge and they do not charge daily gratuities. So there might be some ways to actually be able to remove that. But my understanding is it's not very easy or automatic. On other cruise lines, you would go down to guest services and you would make that request. Now I never like to judge other people when it comes to how they allocate their money towards gratuities. However, I do think that these days, because many times we're doing maybe my time dining and we're seeing different waiters every night, or we might go to the buffet, but there are different people that are cleaning up. And of course there are always people behind the scenes as well. And when it comes to the daily gratuities that cruise lines do charge, my understanding is it's really split amongst many of the people that are serving you, including the people that are behind the scenes. Now, I think I went over a lot of the main things that people should know about tipping on a cruise. However, if there are other things, other mistakes that people are making that you've seen or even that you've made, please let me know down in the comments below. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.